Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the podcast room. Today we have with us Road. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, this black girl magic circle in the room. I'm so excited. Yes. Uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us your name. Tell us what do you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll dive into our black girl magicness yes. <laughs> in a little bit. Yes. So I am essentially what you call a, um, a hot geek. Mm-hmm. Um, my name is Road Malavert. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a chemical engineer. Mm-hmm. And um, I have a master's in business administration uh, with a minor in uh, finance and marketing. And um, actually going back to my, to my bachelor's in chemical engineering, I also have a minor in biomedical engineering because I was kind of had the inspiration of being an, a, a doctor or something in my life. <laughs> I don't know why. We know with the Haitian stuff, you got to be a doctor. So I had that inspiration. So I didn't do it. Um, and I also have a, a minor in applied mathematics. Wow, fancy. Yes, Very I am fancy. a fancy girl. That's good. <laughs> uh, talk about, I mean, obviously in our Haitian culture, you know mm-hmm. that it's really highly recommended that we go to school, we get all these degrees, yep. and we, you know, kind of, we have a standard that we have to meet. Yes. Can you talk about... Um, sort of the stigma in terms of, did you get all those degrees because it's something you personally wanted? It's something that you've dreamt of since you was a child? Or did you kind of have, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah. For doctor? Mm-hmm. For engineer, yeah. Well, you know, you have, you, <laughs> there is that stigma, right? For engineer, or for, for um, doctor, or avocat, or, or, avocat, or you nothing. So, yes. Right. And on top of that, I'm a petit pasteur. So, oh, God, yes. girl. So, I had to get rid of the thing of petit pasteur, so I'm, you know, I gotta go. You know, so I always tell people, <laughs> I'm the one person that is good. I promise you, I'm okay. Just don't cross me the wrong way. That's but, it. You know, but, you know, I, I, um, I chose chemical engineering. Actually, my parents and I, we disagreed on me going to school for chemical engineering. Well, so believe it or not, um, me going to school for chemical engineering would require for me to move out of my house. Wow. And you know that's a no-no. Right. Like a Haitian parents' house. Oh, yes. Because girl. I had the... It could you know, be like 30 years old, still living in their yes, mama house. Yes. And then you had the... Oh, cousin, you you know, I'm like, what is going on here? If I can have sex at your house too. You know, that's that, right? it, girl. So, you gotta get it on and pop it on the side. Right? You know, when the yeah. To anyway, so let me booty just calls that PG. So, but you know, I had to, I had to go outside of that, and um, I remember when I told my mom that, um, mom, I'm leaving. Um, I'm going to University of South Florida, so I'm moving out. I'm going to school. She's like, oh, Obale? I'm like, yeah, I'm Obale. (laughs) And she never said anything to me at all after that. So a month passed by. I'm like, mom, I got my acceptance letter. And okay. (laughs) I'm like, okay. Right. And then the week before I had to move out to move into my dorm, I was like, mom, Obale, we got come on, Obale, we. I'm like, what, 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 was, what do you think I was doing? Right. What, she was in denial, right? Yeah. She was, she was in small. denial all the way till when I was actually standing in line right. and um, trying to get my financial aid and all that stuff um, squared away. And she's like, eh, eh, ben. I'm like, is that love <laughs> petit to create me? I'm like, how is that? You know, I'm trying to better myself. Of and course. so, because I know that. Um, when I chose chemical engineering, I wanted to help people. Mm-hmm. I wanted to um, have a degree where I can create things to make life easier for people. Oh, and that's why when I got out, when I finished, um, I started in, in, in um, well, I did a lot of work. I did some work with uh, NASA where um, I um, designed spring system for the space shuttle. Um, at NASA. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, you know, so one of the things that, that was one of the big things that I did um, in, in, in my life. And then the other thing that I did was I worked at Johnson & Johnson where I designed panty liners for us women, wow. you know. So mm. the design that you have for, um, for stay free and carefree, 
Uh, panty liners, I was one of the engineers that did that design wow. for the panty liners for Johnson & Johnson. Okay, and after that, um, I moved to food where I worked for Kraft, Oscar Mayer, um, processing turkey. I did not eat turkey for a whole year. Wow. You know, it, they had to. I'm sure you was traumatized. It, yes. I have wow. seen men cry and fainted oh, when God. I give them tours of the plant. Okay. So um, it was an interesting um, <laughs> time of my life. I'm sure. But it was good. Um, yeah. And and after that, I worked for General Mills. So I did a little bit. It was prettier. Right. I did cereal and stuff like that, making nice. people happy. Yeah. Uh, and after that, I moved over to metal manufacturing, wow. where I studied as a metallurgist to study the chemistry of metal, um, wow. understanding how to manufacture metal and to meet all of the standards of uh, UN standards that we had to meet uh, to make the packaging. So I did a lot of packaging work, um, lithography. So I designed the equipments that mm -hmm. made those products uh, for my nice. company. Now I'm into plastic. Wow. You've literally touched every item. Food, products, yeah. metal, Anything plastic. Anything that can That's help amazing. people. And I so did some when did you? Too, so. Wow. So uh, when did you decide that you know this is the career path for you? Um, I mean, this is something so niche yeah. that it's like, I'm sure you didn't like grow up saying, oh my God, I want to study metal. How did yeah. that sort of come along? I think it was, I think it's me being open-minded and mm -hmm. also um, having the mentality of always wanting to learn and right. wanting to um, accept the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I always want to challenge myself and yeah. metal was something new and something different that I did not know the industry existed. Right. So in my mind, I was like, okay, wow, this is an industry that is very mature. It's a very mature industry. So there's not a lot of people, young people like myself, that are trying to learn the technologies that are within that industry and the money that's available in that industry. So, so I was like, it would be something good for me to learn for my future because in my mind, I have the mindset of the entrepreneur as well. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, I want to be that diverse person where I can, where I can tell someone, you know, if you want to um, manufacture, um, you know, a packaging that's made out of metal, I can tell you what chemistries you can use and I can tell you what kind of equipments you can buy and how you can build your process so it can be a lean manufacturing process and safe and um, processing to you know OSHA standard and yeah. UN standard and all those things. So I think it's, I think it's um, that that's that's one of the reasons why I, I kind of chose that that path. It kind of just fell into it where it's my mind. I want I always love the challenge, so I just keep as when it presents itself and if it's good, I just accept it. Nice. Uh, can you talk a little bit about being a black woman in this industry? I'm sure you're in the lab with probably a bunch of white men mm -hmm. who either A, don't understand, you know, the things that you deal with mm -hmm. on a day to day, or B, you have to maybe look a certain way, sound a certain way, even alter certain um, cultural, um, you know, things about yourself yep. to sort of adapt and adjust to integrate yourself in the industry. Yep. Talk about that a little bit. Well, um, uh, being a woman and being an, an African-American woman, I can say, like, in my class, I was the only black woman who graduated wow. in my graduating class wow. um, for my bachelor's. So it started that way. Right. So when I got into the industry um, and I started to climb the ladder um, of the corporate, the corporate world, it got smaller and smaller to the point where, you know, I was, I was the one to dictate to white old men on how to do something. So there was the, you're too young. Mm. You don't have enough experience. Mm. You're black. Mm. You're a woman. Mm. You can't tell me what to do. I've been doing this for years. What do you know? Mm. You're some little kid or, you know, you, you speak with an accent, you know, even right. though, even though some people, they say, you know, I, I've, I've been in the U.S. for a long time, but right. a white person can, can, still get my of course, accent of course and, and you some, some of them they have they have that problem but for me i i built a tough skin so i don't let anything that anybody says to me um i don't take it personal of course i just look at it as the person's ignorance mm. so i just need to love on them the way to the way to 
uh, destroy an enemy is to make them your friend mm. right so so what i do is i i always act the way that i would love for them to treat me right. towards them to so the and when they see that when they see that they don't see me you know being very um um, animalistic aggressive, toward right. them or like very aggressive or if right. they if they come to me with anger I, I respond in anger right. um, they 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 kind of pull back a little bit and right. they look at me in a different set of light because I don't have the I'm not the you know um, uh, the stigma of the black woman the angry black woman thing right because that's one of the things too like I'm sure especially in the corporate ladder you have some people that you know, like VPs and CFOs and, and people in the C-suite, they find themselves like trying to say things politically correct so that, they you know, the black, you. yeah, right. so that they don't offend me because I, I could be the angry black woman. Right. And I'm like, uh, no, it's I don't right. even know what the angry black woman is. <laughs> right. Like, what is that? Like, exactly. so they, so they find themselves like, like tiptoeing around me mm. and, you know, like accepting something when they shouldn't. Right. So what I have to do is like, because you can read body languages. So what I do is I read their body language. Like if I go to a, to a, to a board and present a new project to them mm -hmm. and ask them for, you know, five, six, ten million dollars and say, you know, I need ten million dollars to buy this new equipment, to buy this new process line for me to, and then this is your payback and this is that. And I don't hear a lot of questions, but then I see a lot of confusions in people's face. I'm like, so what, 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 do you, what, what is bothering you about this? And that's when you know you start pulling questions literally out of them by asking them questions. You don't just take it because what you don't want to happen, especially in the corporate world where I'm at in manufacturing, what you don't want to happen is you make those people make an investment, right? And then it doesn't pull through of course, because you then you lose your credibility. Of course, you know, course. as a, as an expert in your field, and then and you know they'll they'll be like, oh, you know, she doesn't really know what she's doing. She just has the degree and. Right. I do not want that. And no, you don't want that sure. either of in course, the industry as course. well because it circulates. Yeah. Let's shift gears a little bit. Um, so obviously, we're in Haiti right mm -hmm. now. Yep. Yeah. Woo the heat is great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so how have you sort of um, spilled over what you're doing in the States and giving back or contributing to the Haitian manufacturing scene. I mean, we're at this tech summit. Yep. Talk about what brought you here and what kind of work are you looking to do or are yep. you already doing? Yeah, one of the works that I'm looking to do is to, um, I see there's like a need with entrepreneurs, like who wants to invest, diaspora, who wants to invest by building manufacturing plants in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And I could be that person to be that liaison between Not them. I could be, you will be. Uh, yes, Speak it into I can existence. be. Yes, yes, girl. Um, I, I can be that person um, who will help them build their manufacturing process to American standards mm. and have the American standards that they need. And you have ISO certifications, you have UN certifications, you have all those different FDA, USDA. And if you have those, then you have companies like Coca Cola, Frito Lay, and all those people who will come and try to buy raw materials from you. Sure. So then that creates um, that ecosystem that you need in this country where you have money pouring in from exterior um, from those companies like those big uh, fortune 100 fortune 500 companies that right. are looking to invest back and they will look to see just like Mexico right? right they they build manufacturing sites in Mexico because because you have people um, that came from Mexico that mm -hmm. studied in the US that went back and they build those manufacturing sites mm -hmm. to their standards and we're able to say, hey, come to us. We will make you a product that you can sell to your consumers. Right. And they are safe. So that's one of the things that I, I want to do. And what's stopping you? Why haven't you? Well, that's why I'm here. Okay. I'm networking. I'm trying. Okay, I'm good. networking. Good. And, that's you know, the, step, the first step yep, for I'm sure. I'm networking to, uh, to start a consulting uh, business and manufacturing nice. and engineering. So to help. Um, entrepreneurs um, get the right processes in place, making sure that they are safe to U.S. standard and they are meeting all of the certifications that they need in, right. in order for them to be able to sell here in Haiti. So right. you make sure you make the product and you mm -hmm. make the product to American standards so you know it's safe mm -hmm. for people that are in Haiti that are consuming it. And also you able to convince 
exterior companies like big fortune 100 and 500 companies mm -hmm. they can come and buy raw materials um, in your company to export out into the u.s well nous t'as de là pour la première fois road yes. is looking to partner yes. we road my uh, is looking to collaborate with people who are in need yes. of manufacturing services and she's here to be a consultant and it's important that us in the diaspora make sure that we let them know that we're here to work with them and not yes. against them yes because a pile fois again yeah moon the diaspora actively travail but we're not working hand in hand with yes. the locals yes and so that's very 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 and important. i learned that even even back in the u.s you building a new machine and you bring it into a facility the people that are that are going to be operating this equipment they are the most people that you need to convince first they have to be convinced that they need this voila. in order exactly. for it to be a success because you can drop a five million dollar mm -hmm. machine and it just sits there idle for years right That's because true. the people don't believe in it right and where can we find you on social platforms if anybody's listening and wants to reach out uh you can reach me uh on my cell i have wechat and uh whatsapp at 321-287-4821 and you can also find me on uh, linkedin and on um uh facebook road Malavert, road like Rhode Island, Malavert, M A L I V E R T as in Tom. Yes, and if you're listening to the podcast, unfortunately, you can't see her beautiful face and her popping shoes. Pretty. Yeah, <laughs> my you shoes know, are awesome. Yeah, you would, uh, <laughs> most people in these very geeky, techy industries, you would think that they have no sense of style, but guys, she is sporting this green yes. pleat dress with some popping shoes that says Coca. Does it say Coca Cola on it's it? It's Coca Cola. Yeah. Yes, Yo, Coke. she yes. is representing yes. her her line of work, okay? <laughs> um, and popping earrings, girl, you look great. Thank you. So yes. do you. Thank I'm you. loving that thank yellow you. on you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Nice. It's important. I'm so happy that we got women like you in the industry making things happen, making strides, changing the face of our intellect because yes. You know, especially in the Haitian culture, you know, the women for a very long time have been suppressed. And, yes. you know, for a long time, we weren't allowed to go to school. We weren't allowed to do certain things. So the fact that you're changing that narrative yes. and, you know, there's also the narrative of Haiti and the positive images, but there's also women. Yes. You know, there's it's we have to fight more, harder, mm -hmm. probably harder than the men do, because we have. Yes, there's the Haitian mm -hmm. barrier, but then there's also being a woman. Yeah. So. And please, you, can, you can please contact me if you need help with building your resume because I also uh, um, help people with that. That's something that I do because I just want to help. I'm it's here not for something it. that I. I see a bad guy. So I know I'm all over but, the place. No, but I not do all help over, people. girl. I love, I love to, help, um, to help young people, young women, young men who are looking to. Because our school system in the US. Or in Haiti, I think that's that problem that we have. I was talking to some of my, uh, some of the people that are at the tech summit. Um, we were talking at our table. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we're lacking. We're lacking the part of the education where you teach the students how do you survive outside once you graduate. How mm -hmm. do you sell yourself? Exactly. And I do, I do help um, students with that. That's mm -hmm. something. That's a passion of mine. That you know, I, I had to. I had to find somebody to help me. Mentor. But, you know, I'm willing to mentor people that's because, it. you know, it's, it's something that's difficult to, to find, to find a good person who is willing to help you to, um, to strive and grow in your career. If that's what oh, my God. C'est un plaisir. Road, you are the bomb and you are on the road to success. Thank I'm you. so happy to see what you have in store for us. Our, our country needs you, and I'm happy that you're a black and you're a woman and you're just in the forefront. That's it. Empower, <laughs> um, woman empowerment. Uh, compliments, sis. I'm so proud of you. Thank Keep up you. the great work. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So you've been listening to the podcast room. We're live at the Haiti Tech Summit. My name is Tadia, and it's been a pleasure for me to be here with you guys today. Thank you. Bye.